Hello again. Today I want to show you a couple of things that I found in a sample that I downloaded from Malwarebazaar. I will post a link with this hash uh, in the description of the video so you can also check this out. It had the tag makeup. I hope that's pronounced right. And uh, when I opened this for the first time here in Detected Easy, the scan didn't show anything of interest or something that really stood out. But here in the entropy curve, you can see this third section and data has a very high entropy. So in this video, I just want to share with you uh, my little investigation on this and how I got to the data that is in this section. Let's just close this for now and jump into Gidra. So here is my freshly imported analyzed sample. And what I did first was, because it's a ransomware, I wanted to see where the cryptographic functions come from. Now, if you watched my DearCry video, DearCry actually uses OpenSSL. So in here, when I went to imports, and to this ADV API 32 DLL, I immediately saw all of these functions from the WinCrypt API. So this is where I started to look for some nice indicators. So here with these functions, I wanted to see if I could find some keys. Now, this crypt acquire context is the first function you would normally call. And here I checked the cross-references. The cross-references are listed if you just click on the function. And here under xref, you can find all of these. So in here, I just clicked through and checked all of the functions that call crypt acquire context. Immediately here at this second reference, I found something very interesting. And that is, as you can see, a hard-coded byte string that is in here. So I will just clean this up real quick and then I will talk about this byte string. All right, now this is cleaned up a little bit. Um, this suspected AES key has 32 bytes. That's uh, 256 bits. So that looks like AES 256. And here with this crypt import key function and also with this crypt acquire context, you have a cryptographic provider. That's the first parameter. It's also down here. Um, gonna have a look at that, but for now, What's interesting is this part here, this PB data that is passed in. Now, some constants are set here. And also this key up here, this hard coded key is copied over. And you can see here, this is 32 bytes to, um, to this other buffer. And um, just to show you this and check out if this is actually an AES key, Let's jump over and uh, do a dynamic analysis. So here we are in all the debug. I set a breakpoint at the address of this call to crypt import key. And now I'm just going to execute and we will see what happens. So there we go. We are here at the crypt import key. And what's of interest to us is going to be the second parameter. The second parameter is right here. It's this address, and I am just going to follow this in the dump. Here is the byte string. If you maybe remember the first byte and maybe the last byte from Gidra. And also this information here that we saw that was hard coded also. So let's take this, just copy it and have a closer look. All right. So here's a text file with the key and I'm here on MSDN 
and let's just walk through what's going on here. So we looked at the second parameter, which is denoted as PB data. If we look at PB data down here, it says that this contains a public key struct. So I pulled this up here, this public key struct, and it consists of a first parameter, which is a type, then a version, this reserved, we don't care about, but this algorithm ID is pretty interesting for us. So let's look at the type first. In our case, the first byte is this eight, which means that a plain text key is encoded here. And then the algorithm ID should correspond to AES256, if I'm correct in my assumption. And here we can see that indeed we have this 66 and then this 10 here, which I will just pull up Git real quick. We also saw here. So this indeed is an AES256 key. Now, the next question is, does this key decrypt the data which is contained here in n data? Let's just use the program tree here and go to n data and check out the cross references. Here is the first cross reference, or the only one to n data. Now, this is interesting. This is the start of this block. And here is the crypt acquire context function again. This is not cleaned up, it looks a little bit messy, but um, I think we can live with that for now. And then here is a function call that seems to take this crypto provider. I will just rename this. And some offset. So Let's just go in here and check this out. Okay, couple of mem copies. And here is a decryption. So let's check if this actually performs a decryption on end data. So to do that, I think we will do a little bit of dynamic analysis again and uh, just see what we can find. I'm going to set a breakpoint at this address up here. And uh, then we're just gonna let this run and see what happens. Here I am again in all the debug. I set a breakpoint uh, at the address I showed you in Gidra. Then down here also at crypt decrypt. And here is the dump of end data. And I also set a breakpoint here. So right click, then say breakpoint memory on access, just uh, to see what's going on here. So I'm going to run this a couple of times and then I will show you what I found. So let's begin. We come down here to crypt import key and then crypt decrypt. So if I'm not mistaken, the address in EBX should be the buffer that will be decrypted. So let's just run this once. I am here at this address in the dump already and just see what happens. And there you go. Here is the first decrypted string that we found. Now when I checked this malware out the first time, um, I let this run a couple of times and just check out what strings I would find, what would be decrypted. And uh, one thing I came across pretty quickly, I'll just scroll up here, is uh, this right here. Um, as you can see, this label RSA1. So uh, I'm just gonna copy this, and uh, then I'm gonna show you what this is, what you might already expect. So I'm back here on, uh, on MSDN, and uh, here is this public key struct again. Now, if you look at this hex dump, the first thing is uh, this six and then the two. Then we said uh, the first byte was the type in the struct here. Now let's look at this. The six means, uh, or says it's a 
public key. All right, so should be an RSA public key. Now let's go back to the dump again. And uh, here you can see this A4. Now let's go to MSDN and check out the algorithm IDs. And I will just search here for A4. And here you can see RSA public key exchange algorithm. So that looks good. Should be an RSA key. Now an RSA public key consists of two parts. The first is the exponent that is called E and uh, then N, the product of two large primes. One popular exponent for public keys that uh, comes up a lot is this number here. And if we just convert this to hex, you get this hex string. And if you look here, one, zero, 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 one. So this corresponds exactly to this number. So from all of this information, I'm pretty sure that this should be the RSA public key that the malware uses. So look at that. We found a public key. Isn't that nice? So now we have the AES key. And we also know that NData is being accessed with the decryption function. Let's decrypt NData. Now I have a application here that's called Cryptool. This is uh, often used for educational purposes. And in this application, I'm just gonna import a dump that I made, you can see here, of the section N data. So let's just import this real quick. And uh, I have to select all files here. Here we go. This is the dump of N data, which contains just garbage we can't read. And now we go to encrypt and decrypt. We go to symmetric modern and choose AES CBC. 256 bits. Just mark this. And here I have the AES key that was hard coded. And let's click on decrypt. And here you go. We found the ransom message. So you, when you decrypt end data and uh, just look through the hex dump, you notice that there are zeros between some of the characters of the words that you can find in here. That's too bad because it's not really readable. So I wrote a small program that's called rem and rem just throws out all of these zeros. So the ransom message that we already saw, they, it didn't have that. So that's no problem. But for instance, these strings up here, uh, they do. So that's not very nice. And uh, let's look through this real quick. Okay, it says um, the files get the dark extension. There is also this revil support at privatemail.com to contact the, the authors of uh, this malware. Some other interesting things um, include this WB admin delete catalog quiet and this WMIC shadow copy delete, which uh, throws out all of the, or deletes all of the shadow copies. So this is something that a ransomware would probably want to do. Also this Microsoft Windows current version run, which uh, suggests a, maybe an installation to auto run, I guess. In here, there are a couple of more things. For instance, the string dark, the extension. And um, then down here, you can see this open request A, HTTP send request, and so on and so on. This uh, right here is uh, there's just some API calls to communicate over the internet. And also this regedit.exe. By decrypting this N data block, we already found some interesting information. And um, when I ran this malware, I also saw some network communication going on. So that might be something that would be interesting to investigate. And also, of course, the encryption routine. But for this video, I am going to make a cut here. So if you came this far, thank you very much for watching. And I guess I will see you around. Goodbye.